Hello everybody, welcome to yet another album review. So, the last time I reviewed the album of Symphogear, it was kind of a bit of a mess. I was sleep deprived, I was a bit drowsy from some medicine I had taken, and yeah, I was just a humongous mess. And I basically just sat in front of my camera and rambled on about this show for a while, not doing a very good job. But this time, things are different. I am not on any medication that makes me drowsy, and I'm only slightly sleep deprived, which is basically my default state at this point, and I got notes, so I can actually talk about the songs in detail. So I'm going to be talking about the Symphogear G soundtrack, which I have purchased, and I will show, well, I should, I really should have grabbed that, I shouldn't I have, gave me one moment. Oh, oh god damn it. Ah! So yeah. The whole damn Symphogear G soundtrack. OPEDs and each and every character song. So we're just going to stick these back over here. I don't want the over $100 worth of music to fall over, so I'm just going to have that put finally there. And we're going to talk about this. So Symphogear G... I think this is when Symphogear starts getting into its groove. Symphogear, the first season, was more of a curiosity, and there's a bit of jank. Like, the general formula is there, but Symphogear G is when it really starts to get good, and when it gets a lot more darker, and just, mmm, very good. Very good show. So, um, let's talk about it. OP and ED. Those are good. Those are... Fine, they're not my favorite in the series. Um, I'm pretty sure my favorite still goes to a uh, the latest season that we just finished, XV, I believe it's called. Or is it AXZ? It's XV. The latest season, those are my favorites of the OPs and EDs. But these are pretty good. They're pretty solid. I mean, I think it's a tie between this season and last season. But yeah, they're okay. But we're not here to talk about those. We're here to talk about the character songs. And the character songs are great. So first I want to talk about the character songs that have already... we've The characters that are returning, basically. First we have Hibiki. She has two songs. The first is... Believe in Justice, Grip It Tight. And it is... I like this song. We have some more of the Celtic vibe going on. I honestly wish there was a bit more, like it begins... And at first it sounds like it's a general pop tune, and then you get some of the whole Celtic bagpipey type thing. But then it kind of sort of devolves into a more traditional J-pop song, and I would have appreciated a bit more of a Celtic, more obvious Celtic bagpipe, Scottish-ish, that kind of vibe to the thing. And honestly, this song is kind of really upbeat and really, really um, fitting with her character. But at the same time, the lyrics are talking about her dying. It's repeated these lines like, Even if this life withers away, our connected hands, warmth will leave something behind or turn to a seed or a repeat of that first um, follow-up. And it's honestly a bit shocking because it's like Hibiki knows she's going to die because a big plot point of the series is that in season one it's revealed that Hibiki's the shards of the Gunkir artifact that have lodged themselves into her chest have been spreading through her body and the main scientist lady who turns out to be the big bad of the season is like it's fine it's no big deal you don't have to worry about it and then for season two, it turns out, oh yeah, we totally have to worry about it. Like, she is literally dying. Like, at one point, she is literally outputting so much energy that if uh, her wife slash best friend touches her, she will probably literally burst into flames. And it's kind of horrifying. And it kind of ramps up the body horror, because at one point, there is literally crystals of, like, the Gungir artifact material bursting out of her body during one of the battles, and it's during this battle where she actually sings her second song in the album, which is called Rainbow Flower. And it's a... Honestly, it's a very hopeful song. 
And it's surprisingly so, considering the whole literally dying in front of us thing, but it's like she actually has a plan on how to fix this, and she's singing it while fighting Miku, and it's honestly a song about, like, her feelings for Miku, and it's just shy of a confession, and it's really cute, and I really like it. So then, we have our next song. These are the Tsubasa songs, and this is um, Sword Girl. And her first is the Moonlit Sword, and I love this song. It is Japanese as all hell. There's a bunch of Japanese string instruments. There's some traditional Buddhist chanting, and it's just like, unlike Hibiki's song, which only has some Celtic vibes to the beginning of it, and for the most part it's drowned out by the J-poppiness, there is Japanese traditional folk music type vibe the whole way through of this. And it has tons of allusions in the lyrics towards traditional Japanese culture, towards some stories. And it's just, I love the vibe of this song. It's so good. Next we come to the next song called Romantic Okehazama. I am not Japanese. Most likely than not, neither are you. So don't at me on my pronunciation. I'm probably going to say a couple of Japanese names and words, and they're going to be wrong. But this song, oh my god, this song is so... Oh, I love it. Because first of all, it comes out of left field. Because so far, you know, she's big Japanese, she's traditional Japanese girl, and that's come through in her music. And then we get this very salsa spanish vibe. Like, it's like, oh, is this like a romantic song? And yes, yes it is. This song is gay as hell. Like, this is... one of What is the very first line in this song when translated to English is... What have you done to my lips? You've taught it the taste of sin, you evil person. All of the lyrics on this song, the general vibe, it's like... It's talking about how she is in love and she has no idea how to deal with it. And it is obviously about Maria, her sort of counterpart, and it is fantastic, and it is gay as hell, and oh my god, Ugh! I just can't. I mm. get 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 prepared for me to make a lot of weird mouth noises because this season the lyrics of the songs are gay as hell. They were probably gay as hell for the last season, but I didn't bother to look them up because I. Just really wanted to make that video, and uh, like I said, I was incredibly sleep-deprived and drowsy from some medicine. So next we come to Chris's songs. We have Bye Bye Lullaby, her fight song, and it is talking about... Well, it's basically her... Basically, it's her fight song, and her fight songs are always rock, you know, sort of butt-rockish. Like, if you've ever played, like, a fighting game from the Blaze Blue Guilty Gear people, it's kind of like that kind of music. And I love it. I'm gonna say this, I think this one is a step down from the last season. I really like the last seasons. I really wish they had gone more hard rock with this. There are a couple of guitar riffs, but it's not quite as heavy as the previous song was. But she does say go to hell in English a lot in this song, and I find that rad as hell, and I love it. And she counts down a couple of times while well, she counts up. Like, does she count up or count down? I can't remember. I'm bad at remembering things. But yeah. It's basically a song about how she has a home now, and she has people she wants to protect, and she's going to protect them, and it absolutely slaps. Lovely song. Fantastic. One of my favorites on the CD, but then again, if you put something with high amount of energy on it, I'm gonna love it regardless of what it says. Next we come to Metronome Classroom, and I don't want to make any changes. Stop that. It's basically a song talking about how things are getting, how she's becoming more and more hopeful and happy after the events of pre and during the first season. It's just cute as hell talking about holding hands and talking about how people have been reaching out to her and how she wants to get better. And it's just, and like I said, it's cute as hell. Just let Chris be happy. I just want Chris to be happy. Let the little murder marshmallow be happy. Now we come to Miku. So Miku actually did have a sort of character song in the previous 
soundtrack, but, well, the only way you can get that is to buy the Blu-ray, and if, like me, you've ever looked into buying the Blu-ray of an anime, you know why I didn't do that. I'm not going to do that for one song. If they had, like, a complete soundtrack, then it might be cost-effective, but no, not for one song. So, the first one is called, and I'm going to butcher this name, so I apologize, Shin Shoujing, The Distorted Mare. It's a love song, which is a bit disturbing considering the context it happens in. Some of the lyrics include, Stars fall like you did that day, I will change everything, give it back, I want it back. And it's talking about, like, how she, about all these times she's nearly lost Hibiki and how she wants to go back to happier days. And it's super synthy and it's super sort of computer, like, synth digital music, which, if you've seen my videos on the music I kind of make, totally my jam, I love it. But at the same time, it's super, super, super disturbing because the entire time she's fighting Hibiki and she's kind of sort of being mind-controlled and it's just really disturbing when this happened, especially since she's trying to get save her girlfriend by fighting her when her girlfriend fighting is causing her to die. And it's just a super messed up time in the story and it's just... Ah! Yeah. I love this song for the context is in. It's okay pop synth it's just okay it's more for the context that this song happens in that it that gets me going when i listen to it next we come to what's hidden in the bag her sort of other insert song and it's basically about her wanting to hold hibiki's hand that's literally it it's just that miku does not like seeing hibiki sad she wants to make her happy and she wants to hold her hand and it's sweet and gay as hell and this show is called Simpho Gay by some people and I this show is populated by lesbians and I could not love it anymore. So then we come to Subasa and Maria's song. It's called Phoenix Flame. And it's J-pop. It's good J-pop. It's fantastic J-pop. I love it. It just sounds good. This, It's just, it's about, you know, it's a sort of upbeat, uplifting J-pop song. It's talking about, you know, going forward together and to come with them. And it's just great. And honestly, the best part of this song is when it happens in the show. And these two just have such obvious chemistry together. And it's like, they're dancing with each other. And it's like, oh, oh, you two are gay. This is gay. I love it. You two, I ship you two. Ship, ship, ship. Just... Ah! So then we come to Maria. She is the new sort of pop idol character. The Kanade replacement, kind of, sort of. In, some time, in, in more ways than one. Because um, she reveals that she has a completed version of the gun gear. And her first song is Gun Gear, The Violent Spear. Which is, we actually, it's actually played... It's actually the second song we hear in the anime, but yeah, it's basically some ominous chanting at the start. We get some epic as hell build up, and then it turns into this sort of epic sort of triumphant kind of song, and it's talking about she will never stop until she wins and she will sacrifice herself for her ideals. And considering the context of this show, it's kind of weird. It like it almost paints this as it almost paints her as the hero. And, and now that I think about it, maybe this makes sense because for most of the show, she sees herself as doing the right thing. But as we learn, she's doing the bad thing, and she eventually doubles down on doing the bad thing. And it's just, whew. it's just yeah. Then we get her second song, "Dark Oblivion." Okay, so, first of all, this thing is entirely in English for some reason, and it's not like they got an English singer to sing this. This is the same voice actor for Maria, who is singing this, and you can tell she either has a very basic understanding of English or doesn't know it. The first part, it begins with this auto-tune bit that is ominous as hell. I love it. It's super synth-heavy. 
super lots of um it goes hopeful it goes hopeless to hopeful and it's just i really like this song i really like how it goes from you know from everything is hopeless to no it doesn't matter fight on fight on and then it's just like super synthy and bassy and i love synth noise i love digital music i just love that stuff that i love it so super big mark for this kind of music and you know what i don't regret it so next we come to shirabe which is the twin tail saw blade girl and her first song is shul Shagana, the Annihilating Saw. These are just the names of their Sympho gears. And it's a song that talks about how she doesn't know how to deal with her emotions. It states, I've started to forget smiling, but I'm fine. At another part, it says, target every unneeded emotion and uninstall it. And the song's general tone is dark as hell, and I love it. Also, at one point in the show... This song is sung as a duet with Kirika, her the other sort of the third member of the enemy Sympho Gear faction. And oh my god, they actually sing I Love You to each other, and the noise I made when that happened was like it probably hurt animals nearby because the obvious lesbians in my anime, actually said the love word to each other, and they actually confessed, and... ah. And then we have Practice Mode, which is... A, another super gay song about being in love, and how she doesn't know how to deal with it. And that she wants the person she's in love with, obviously clear, Kirika, to please be patient with her, because she's trying. And it's super cute, and super great, and oh my god... This is just, this isn't even subtext at this point. It's just text, and it's phenomenal. Then we have Kirika songs, which the first is Igalima, the Imprisoning Scythe. And it's like lots of piano, very super jazzy vibe I get from it. And it's just, I really like it, and I would like to tell you more, but I just can't get over the fact that this is the second part of that duet where the two obvious lesbians actually come out and sing I love you to each other, and it is fantastic. Why am I doing this hand motion? I don't know. This actually hurts. I should stop. And then we come to second letter. And this is not okay. This is not okay, okay? I thought this is... When I first listened to it, it's super upbeat, super... Just general, very upbeat, very happy-go-lucky pop vibe. And then I read the lyrics, and considering some of the things that happens in the next season, this is obviously talking about suicidal feelings, and there is allusion to a couple of notes that she's left, and a letter, and it's talking about how Kirik is feeling slightly suicidal due to the whole might actually be taken over and soul-devoured by Fine, and how this is... This is not okay. No, no, no. So anyways, that's my review of Sympho Gear G. It was a good season. I really liked it. I really liked the music. If I had to say, with the exception of maybe Chris's song and Hibiki's main song, all in all, it's an upgrade from the last. And there's more music. Well, technically, there's more music that you can actually buy. That a sane person would buy. I'm not buying a three to $400 Blu-ray. Which is set, which is how much it's gonna cost to get the other songs. But yeah. Anyways, that's been me for the day, Juan John John. If you like this video, like it. If you dislike it, there's a button for that too. Comment, subscribe, ring the bell. And I'll probably do more album music reviews of just anime tunes and maybe some more music tunes, and who knows? Who knows? So I shall see you all later. Goodbye.